Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Uh, what I'm going to be showing you today is how to mesh any two LEGO Technic gears on a regular LEGO Technic grid like this. Now the idea for this video came about when I was playing around with uh, some gears and I was trying to mesh, for example, a 20 tooth gear and a 24 tooth and I found that on a straight line they don't mesh. Um, there's a small gap in between. However, I played around and discovered, probably like most other people, that you can actually put them on a diagonal and create this nice meshing mechanism and creates a uh, 5 to 6 gearing ratio. And this kind of got me thinking, I thought, well, there must be other ways of um, meshing gears on diagonals. And I started studying all the possible ways that uh, you could do that, and I'm going to be presenting those to you today. So the first thing I did was to catalogue all the available gears in LEGO Technic and I've put them onto this table and the left column here shows you the number of teeth that each gear has got. Uh, quite a regular pattern, they're all multiples of four. Of course the multiples of four because the axles have got a four-way symmetry so that means that no matter which way you put the gear on the, um, on the axle it's always going to look the same. Uh, so we've got 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 and interestingly enough uh, 32 has not been created yet. Uh, we've got 36 and 40. Uh, the table also shows uh, the blue colour gears are the ones that are the, uh, the regular gears. So which are the kind of the flat uh, gears like that. Uh, it's like the 16 and the 40. Uh, the yellow, those are the bevel gears. Now the advantage of the bevel gears is they can be meshed on a 90 degree angle like this and mesh both ways, either this way or that way. Uh, also showing in this table is the radius of each gear um, and that's shown in LEGO uh, units so again a very regular pattern we've got a half, three quarters, one, one and a quarter, one and a half, 1.75 the missing 32 tooth gear if it does ever get released uh, would very likely have a radius of two then we've got two and a quarter and two and a half so the most important factor that determines whether or not two gears will mesh is the radius and what we need is the spacing between the axles for the two gears to be equal to the sum of their radii. Now on a regular lift arm like this the spacing of all the holes are all um, you know, integer whole numbers which means that any two gears that I pick the radii have to add up to a whole number in order to be able to mesh on a lift arm. So for example the 16 tooth gear has got a radius of 1 so if I get two of those, then one plus one is two. Uh, and that means that they will mesh with that space of two gaps uh, between the gears. Uh, another example would be a 20 tooth gear has got a radius of one and a quarter. 12 has got a radius of three quarters and three quarters plus one and a quarter is equal to two as well. So again, the 20 and the 12 will mesh nicely on a uh, straight lift arm like this. Now there are eight different types of LEGO gears available, uh, each with a different radius. And what that means is actually many combinations of combining two different gears. So what I've done is I've plotted all of the possibilities on this table here. What this is showing is gear 1 and gear 2, each of the uh, radii, and the sum of the radius is shown uh, in this table here. So for example, if we're looking at an 8 gear meshed with an 8 gear, then the combined radii is equal to 1 which means that it will mesh on a regular lift arm and studying this table we can see that all the whole numbers are on diagonals like this um, and of course two sides of the table are symmetrical this is for example meshing 28 with 8 and this is 8 with uh, 28 over there so these two entries are effectively identical but reversed and if we look at the number of unique combinations it is in fact 36 uh, and just looking at the whole numbers we can see we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 different ways of combining um, gears on just a real lift arm. However, the total number of combinations, like I said before, is 36. So the question is, how do we mesh some of the other types of gears together on a regular grid? So in order to answer that question, what I've done is I've created this plot here. And what this plot here represents is a regular uh, Lego grid. This is represented by these dark grid lines. And the idea of each of these quadrants is, is that we've plotted the sum of those radii that, uh, from this table here. Uh, so we've got like the 1s, the 2s, the 3s, 4s and 5s. These are plotted in this quadrant. So this is the uh, combined radius or radii of 1, combined 2, 3, 4 and 5. Uh, similarly we've got the quarters. So we've got 1 and a quarter, 2 and a quarter, 3 and a quarter and 4 and a quarter. 
and again we've got the halves here and three quarters here. Overall there's actually 17 uh, different sums of radii that you can create and the idea of this grid is you can look at where the um, these quarter circles cross with the regular grid. So for example here we've got the sum of radii 5 along uh, this curve here and we can see for example that it crosses pretty much exactly on this grid at coordinates 4 by 3. So what that means is that any two gears that uh, have a combined radii of 5 can be meshed on a grid at coordinates uh, 4, 3. So for example uh, the coordinate five, the radii 5 is only the, the two 40 teeth gears and I can mesh them from this. I can mesh them for example by putting this one here and if I count along I think the uh, correct location will be there so it, this shows you that uh, we can mesh two gears on a diagonal uh, by using 4 by 3 as a coordinate system and that's two 40 teeth gears and as you can see they mesh uh, pretty much exactly. So all we're going to do now is identify locations where the uh, sum of the radii intersect exactly on the coordinate grid. So for example we've really identified that at 3, 4 intersects exactly with radii sum 5, so that was that one over there. The other obvious ones are all the exact coordinates like 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, so these just match onto a, a linear lift arm. Uh, looking everywhere else we don't have any other good matches along these curves where they intersect exactly with the grid coordinates. So looking at the quarters, we've got one and a quarter, uh, that is not a good enough match. We have a very good match over here at coordinates 2, 1. So that matches exactly 2 and a quarter. Uh, this one over here almost matches, but the problem with this one is, is that the sum of the radii is actually larger than uh, the grid coordinates, which means the meshing will be too tight and the gears won't turn. Uh, the other very good match here is at 3, 3. So that matches uh, four and a quarter exactly. Looking at this quadrant here, uh, along there again, that's not a good enough match. Um, we do have a match over here. So unlike this corner there, uh, the grid coordinates are actually larger than the sum of radii. So that does mesh, uh, even though it'd be slightly loose, it is a, a good mesh. And the other very good match is over here, which is at two, four matching uh, the uh, summer radii four and a half and that's all the matches uh, for the halves and then looking at the three quarters looking along here we don't have any matches along here we don't in fact we've only got one good match and that is at coordinate two two matching uh, the summer radii two and three quarters so anything that sums up to two and three quarters will match on grid coordinates two two I'll now just give an example of how to use this chart. So at this coordinate here, uh, 2, 3, we can see that it matches the sum of radii 3.5. So if we go to the chart behind, then anything that matches the 3.5 will mesh. Uh, so maybe 40, 16. We can put that on our example grid. So here's a 40, here's a 16. If we go 3, 2 across, we can see that matches exactly. Uh, another example using that three and a half uh, would be uh, 36 and 20. So we'll grab a 36, grab a 20, and go three, two across. And look at that, that meshes as well. Uh, another one on the chart would be using the three quarter example. We've only got one match, uh, matching coordinate there, so at two, two, we'll match two and three quarters. We look up two and three quarters that'll mesh with anything along this diagonal. So we could take uh, say 24 and 20. So we've got the 24 over here. Grab a 20, go 2-2 two, two across. And look at that, that's my original discovery that I discovered by myself. Uh, and this now shows how that's been found formally. Okay, so what I've done now is I've transferred these coordinates uh, onto this chart and I've updated it such that it shows you with the shaded boxes all the uh, pairs of gears that can be combined. So the green shaded boxes is all the uh, simply the uh, linear lift arm combinations and the blue shaded boxes are all the diagonals. So for example the two and a quarters, the four and a quarters, 
the uh, three and a half, four and a half, and two and three quarters. So those are all the ones that can be made. Uh, any box that's not shaded either blue or green uh, can't be made directly. So how do we combine those gears? Well, the answer is is to use the intermediate gear. Now, what an intermediate gear is is a gear that's placed between two other gears. Like for example, in this case, we cannot combine a 20 and a 36 directly. There's no place where they will uh, mesh. However, if we by using the 28 and placing like this, we can in fact have this one rotate that one through the intermediate gear and if you do the calculations on intermediate gear what you find is is that it does not affect the overall gearing ratio between these two end gears so independent of what gear you put in the middle the gearing ratio will simply be uh, whatever the gearing ratio is between these two so in this case it's 20 to 36 so I'll just show you how to find the intermediate gear to mesh any two other gears. So for example, let's say we want to mesh 12 and 16. Well, that can't be done directly because 1 and 3 quarters radii sum doesn't exist on a regular grid. So what we're going to do is find a common gear that they both do mesh with. So for example, gear 20 meshes with 12 and also meshes with 16. So that means that 20 can be used as an intermediate between 12 and 16. So I'll just give an example. So here we've got uh, gear 12. Here we've got gear 16, uh, there's no way of meshing them directly, however by using that intermediate gear 20 that we can put over here like this, put 16 there, we can now see they can be used to mesh directly and that intermediate gear doesn't affect the gearing ratio, so the gearing ratio between this gear and that gear is just simply the um, ratios as if they were combined like this. So that would be three quarters. Another example could be trying to mesh eight and twelve. So eight and twelve again uh, cannot be meshed directly. We need a one and a quarter spacing. However, they do have in common, uh, in fact, two different gears. We've got gear twenty-four will mesh with eight and mesh with twelve, as well as gear thirty-six will mesh with eight and twelve. So we'll just uh, show you how that would work. So we've got our gear twelve here. We have got a gear 8, and again, they are, cannot be meshed together, but if we grab that gear 24, uh, let's grab it over here, um, we can mesh them like this, and look at that, we can now combine 8 and 12 through the 24, and like I said before, it can also be done through uh, the 36. So we can grab the 36, combine them like this, and put that there like that, and we can combine 8 and 12 as well. Alright, so finally what I've done is I've updated this chart and I've shaded in all the combinations that can be created with an intermediate gear using the colour purple. Uh, and look at that, good news is it's possible to create every possible gearing combination either directly with the green shaded squares on a diagonal which is the blue shaded squares or by using the intermediate gear which is the purple shaded gears and of course some of those have more than one possibility. So I think it's very good news, it's possible to create every single combination and so if you enjoyed watching this video and got something out of it please support this channel by liking and subscribing and we'll see you next time. Thank you.